the solar system is filled to the brim with celestial objects. The moon glistens above the Earth, a mainstay in our sky each and every night. But what if there were two moons instead? What about five? What about... 80? Most large celestial bodies, such as planets, have what are called satellites, which are smaller orbital bodies like our moon. But some celestial bodies have more satellites than others. Jupiter is a rather extreme example of this. It's got over 80 moons in total, including some larger than our own moon and many more that are smaller, but no less interesting. It has moons with oceans underneath its surfaces. Moons with endless volcanic eruptions. And moons that might even be housed with life. Most people know about Jupiter's main moons, like Ganymede, and we'll take a look at those but we're gonna focus primarily on the moons you've probably never heard of, and some of the secrets of the solar system that might lie within. You're watching Liminology, and this is the Forgotten Moons of Jupiter. Jupiter's moons are legendary to say the least. Their discovery goes back to the year 1610, when the four largest of Jupiter's moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, were discovered by Galileo Galilei, the father of modern astronomy. These moons are the most well-known and the best understood because we've been studying them for over 400 years. More so recently, with the Pioneer, Voyager, Juno, and New Horizon probes all passing by them since the 1970s. Ganymede, for instance, is the largest moon in our entire solar system. Measuring it at about 5,260 kilometers in diameter, making it even larger than the planet Mercury. It's also the only moon that has its own magnetic field due to its molten core, which means it's able to reflect some of the sun's radiation. The surface of Ganymede is rocky and frigid, likely minus 150 degrees Celsius or colder, but NASA predicts that underneath all of that lies a saltwater ocean. So if you ever find yourself in need of an ice bath, I guess you know where to go. Its next moon, Europa, measuring in at about 3,100 kilometers in diameter, also has a molten core, but no magnetic field. Its surface is far less rocky and far more icy, and underlying that ice is also likely its own saltwater ocean. These waters are likely far more vast than even the Earth's oceans, and likely have been around for billions of years, which means Europa is one of the most likely places to contain life forms beyond Earth. Io, on the other hand, is quite a different moon. It measures in at about 3,640 kilometers, but you won't find any water on this moon. But you might find a volcano or two, or a few hundred to be precise. Io is actually the most volcanically active body in the entire solar system. Its surface practically never looks the same over an extended period of time, as the lava flows across the entirety of the planet, changing its surface continually. Jupiter's fourth moon, Callisto, is also a record breaker in more way than one. It's thought to be around 4 billion years old, making it the oldest icy celestial body in our solar system. Jupiter's massive gravitational pull is also known to attract a fair amount of asteroids to its vicinity, and this shows on Callisto's surface, as it's the most heavily cratered object in the entire solar system, a record previously held by my face when I was 14 years old. This is all impressive enough on its own, and yet, Jupiter has another 76 moons orbiting it besides these. We know quite a bit less about these moons than the others, however. But what we do know so far is quite mesmerizing and interesting. Take Metis, for example. I might not be pronouncing that right, but it's the closest moon to Jupiter. Its orbital period is about 7 hours and 4 minutes, but a day on Jupiter is a full 9 hours and 56 minutes. 
That means it appears twice in Jupiter's sky within a day on certain days. A phenomena whose bizarreness becomes apparent the moment you imagine if our own moon was doing that. Adrestia is the second closest moon to Jupiter, and it orbits at the edge of Jupiter's faint ring. It's thought that this moon, as well as Metis, are the primary contributors of material to Jupiter's ring, which has implications perhaps in understanding how Saturn's rings were formed by perhaps its own moons, known or even unknown. Most moons are gray in color, but Amalthea has other plans up its sleeve. This moon is bright red, and scientists don't exactly understand why. They theorize it might be due to sulfur on its surface, but it's just a guess. When we think of rings like on Saturn or Jupiter, we typically associate it with planets and large ones at that. Himalaya, on the other hand, wants to buck this trend. It's only 200 kilometers in diameter, but it's been analyzed to have its own debris ring similar to large planets. It's likely the case that it developed this ring through a collision with a smaller asteroid. Astronomers are now debating whether this is evidence of Jupiter itself being the site of many large-scale collisions with smaller celestial bodies, and if that explains how it has so many moons. While most moons are known for their size, this next one is known for its lack thereof. Jupiter L2 is just one kilometer in diameter, making it the smallest moon in the solar system. And this fact is actually impressive. You see, Jupiter's massive gravitational pull should have absolutely devoured this small fry by now, even at its far distance of 20 million kilometers from it. And yet, Jupiter L2 appears to be in a stable orbit, and astronomers are not sure how exactly that's possible. The moon Ananke, not to confuse it with the group Ananke, which is a group of moons around Jupiter, is a case of survival of the fittest. The Ananke group is a group of 22 moons in Jupiter's orbit that are all remnants of what is believed to be a violent collision between two or more larger moons billions of years ago. Ananke, the moon, not the group, is the largest of these moons itself having gotten that large by consuming smaller moons over time. S2003J12, try saying that one 15 times fast, not the most creative name perhaps, but there's a good reason for that. It was discovered in only 2003 by a professional astronomer team led by Scott Shepard, but it was actually lost for over 17 years and astronomers weren't sure if they'd ever find it again, or if it was even real in the first place. But it was rediscovered in 2020 by an amateur astronomer named Kai Lee, who was simply stifling through old telescope data. And lastly, there's Cori, the furthest moon in Jupiter's orbit. It's over 24 million kilometers away from Jupiter, making it almost 64 times farther away from Jupiter than our own moon is from Earth. To put that into perspective, Mars's closest approach to Earth is about 54 million kilometers, which means Cori is about half as far away from Jupiter as Mars sometimes is from Earth. And its orbital period is 780 days. It must get pretty lonely out there. As we discover more details about these moons, more mysteries will likely arise, but hopefully some questions will be answered. What has become obvious, however, is that Jupiter is truly the breadbasket of our solar system, and will likely become a hotspot for scientific and astronomical research for centuries to come. Whether or not we discover more moons or other objects remains to be seen, but you can be sure that keen astronomers, amateurs and professionals alike, 
will be keeping their eyes peeled for whatever they can find. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Which one of Jupiter's obscure moons was your favorite or did you find the most interesting? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.